There can be very little doubt that the Lloyd Grahams of Seoby Hall loved their dogs. The evidence is quite literally set in stone around the grounds. Three pairs of dog statues decorate the gardens, and there is a dog cemetery at the back of the house. On the balustrade at the front of the house, two greyhounds stare out to sea, lying with their legs stretched out in front of them, and their heads up and alert. They look tense as if they are poised, ready to run at the word of command. These are not pets, but sporting dogs. To the side of the house, flanking the archway that divides the stockyard from the front lawn, are two massive guard dogs. Their location reinforces their role as guards, protecting the family's privacy from any member of the estate staff who might happen to stray into the family's garden. The last two dogs are either side of the steps onto the terrace in the pleasure garden and are very different from the others. They are two spaniels lying in a relaxed, reclining position, their legs lazily stretched forward, their heads are slightly turned and their mouths open. These are neither sporting animals nor guard dogs, but pets. Their position and expression suggest playfulness, that they are, perhaps, waiting to run after a ball or a stick. As well as the stone dogs, the Lloyd Grahams also had real dogs. The estate kennels were situated behind the home farm on land now outside the bounds of the estate. The kennels do not survive, but old maps clearly show them as a large building with three separate yards at the rear. The dogs kept here would have been hunting and other working dogs, and it is no coincidence that the gamekeeper's house was situated in an adjacent building. The family also had pet dogs, although by the 19th century, Keeping dogs as pets was not particularly new. The status of pet dogs changed dramatically during the Victorian period. The Victorians' romantic emphasis on family and home was extended to their pets, and the dog, with its childlike trust and unconditional loyalty, was the perfect addition to the Victorian family and home. Indeed, for the first time in the long relationship between humans and canines, the dog actually became part of the family. And when they died, they were mourned. It is from this period that the dog cemetery at the rear of the hall dates. We know of several dogs owned as pets by the family. Yarbrough Gamaliel Lloyd Graham, who died in 1890, owned a large Irish wolfhound called Oscar. Yarbrough would take the dog on long walks to Bridlington Quay via the old town and then back along the cliffs. The dog knew the route perfectly and would single-mindedly walk by himself on those occasions when his master was indisposed. A powerful animal... He once jumped over the locked gates between the lodges of the gatehouse. Yarborough also had two virtually identical St Bernards, named Nora, who once bit the postman as he came to the house, and Nona. In later years, Yarborough Gamaliel's son, Yarborough George, would also own a wolfhound, also called Oscar, as well as a pet fox terrier. Today, Seoby Hall and Gardens is still a dog-friendly venue, and owners can walk their dogs in the footsteps of Oscar, Nora and Nona while the six magnificent stone dogs that decorate the grounds are a lasting testimony to the family's love of man's best friend.